Well, welcome everybody. We're very grateful to have another opportunity to have Sister Gwen Shorter with us. And if you missed our first two presentations, go back and watch those because you truly missed a blessing. The first one was her testimony. And the second one was her testimony as it regards to dress. Today, we're going to hear about Sister Gwen's testimony as it pertains to health and the medical missionary work. So the title for today's presentation is Why You Should Be a Medical Missionary. And I really appreciate you being here, Sister Gwen. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule. I know you're at a retreat and I see the mountains in the background. I wish I could be there with you. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I, I am going to just hand you the time. Uh, but before I do, I just want to remind everyone that Sister Gwen has, has graciously offered, if you want to purchase anything from her store, which is homewardpublishingministries.org, you can go there. And if you type, I always mess that up. I'm sorry. <laughs> dot com i should remember that because that's what my web page is is dot com so okay so homeward publishing ministries dot com if you when you order if you type in the code word data which is my first name d-a-n-n-a -N -N -A, uh, she's offered to give a 10 percent discount and the the little tracks that she's uh, using for these presentations are on there she has lots of books lots of free medical missionary training, lots of medical missionary supplies. You really need to check out her webpage. And so um, Sister Gwen uh, was a, a fashion model. I won't say high fashion model because she was too short, <laughs> but she was a model and the Lord brought her out of that and brought her into the precious truth and um, has lit a fire in her soul. And so I am going to get out of the way and let that fire burn. Sister Gwen, take it away. Okay. Thank you so much, Dana. Yes. It's a pleasure to be here. I really enjoy sharing what God has done for me and how he brought me out of gross darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. It's amazing what God can do. I wish I could tell you more. But I'm just going to read this little track and it's going to be on my website sooner or later. And you'll be able to order them on health and on dress. So you want to dress up or down. This is the one we did last time. And this one is um, I'm just going to read it and you'll see how it um, converges into the medical missionary work. This health message saved my life. A true life story and dramatic turnaround from sickness to health. And this is the statement I have on the front. We shall see the medical missionary work broadening and deepening at every point of its progress because of the inflowing of hundreds of thousands of streams until the whole earth, the whole earth now is covered as the waters cover the sea. And that's taken from Medical Ministry, page 317. As a PK growing up, we were never poor, but we weren't rich either. My family always lived in the parsonage. I was away. I was always, it was always in a nice neighborhood. And the church made sure my sweet singing dad had everything he and his family needed and wanted. I had never heard Jesus was coming back to this earth again and used to secretly muse to myself, why am I here? What's life all about? And I must try like crazy to make it through heaven's door one day. The only other option was to burn forever and... That didn't sound too inviting. Every day for breakfast, I would gobble down some Kellogg's cornflakes or Cheerios with milk and sugar and run off to school with a bologna sandwich on white bread with mayonnaise and a bag of potato chips and a sticker bar. Tasted good to me. I was happy as a lark. In high school every year and college as well, 
I was a cheerleader and the first black professional cheerleader for the Kansas City Chiefs. I put on, I put out lots of energy practicing flips, backflips, splits, cartwheels, and help choreograph exhibitions on the football field and the basketball court, but had little or no nutrition. In my dad's church, there was no such thing as shy and doing nothing. He strongly encouraged and showed me how to write speeches and to enter this and that oratorical contest, which I won all but one. In college, more of the same and more and more extracurricular activities. This also prepared me for my life work. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. My mom wanted me to be a secretary, but my dad's influence gave me a love for the English language in, and in college, that became my goal to teach English, speech, and drama on the secondary educational level. This made my four years lots of fun. Then something began to change in my health. I felt it before in high school, but not as severely. I began to get very tired, and at times I would just black out unexpectedly with no notice which was very dangerous. I went to the family doctor and after running some tests, he said I was hypoglycemic. Well, <laughs> he said to me, quote, keep candy in your purse. And when you feel tired, just get some candy and you'll be fine. I did, but that didn't work. Once at my first job, I blacked out while sitting and I fell backwards. And if it hadn't been for the person sitting next to me, I would have probably cracked my skull on the cement floor. He caught my head and I was out. Then while I was doing my student teaching in a high school in Jefferson City, Missouri, I often skipped breakfast and would walk to the high school where I taught 11th and 12th graders. One morning, I blacked out in the snow on the sidewalk with books in hand, purse and all. Some kind people called the ambulance and took me to the university infirmary. Well, when I came to, I did not remember anything. And after a day's rest, back to my schoolwork. After graduating college, I received a scholarship to work on my master's degree in theater arts at New York University. One day while walking, in the New York City subway, I blacked out again. According to Rick Shorter, my newfound friend, and to be fiance husband, it was several minutes. Hello? Yes, okay, we can one. hear you. Okay, I will continue. Okay. Turned up to the subway. It just blacked out when I blacked out on yeah. the page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I stopped off here. I also remember in New York City, they had these hot dog carts where men would push them and sell some of the most delicious hot dogs. And one day Rick was with me and I was going to order a hot dog. He interrupted my transaction and said, if you're going to eat a hot dog, why not get a beef one? I said, what is the difference? Then he explained how they are made. And then I didn't want any pork or beef. That, that was it for me and hot dogs. I, and he did the same thing with me with shrimp. He took me to the finest restaurants in New York City. And I would always order shrimp. Shrimp cocktail and then dinner. One evening whilst, while eating my shrimp cocktail, he had to say something, which at first I wished he hadn't. He said, do you know what that little black part is on the shrimp? I always ate it and didn't care. It was my favorite. It was my favorite um, appetizer. I said, no, I don't know what it is. He said, that is the shrimp's fecal excretion. I dropped the shrimp and never ate another shrimp or shrimp cocktail. He never mentioned how he grew up or that it was in the Bible or a special health message. Looking back, I see now the Holy Spirit was preparing me for my life work. 
I was taught if you didn't eat meat, you would die. I never heard of vegetarians, healthy diets or anything of the sort, but it was definitely becoming interesting. I was beginning to see signs my health was fleeting and I did not know what to do about it. The candy in my purse didn't help. It just deferred the inevitable. Rick and I went from nightclub singing where I met him to my manager at the at the Apollo Theater where I won five nights in a row to the baptismal pool in a matter of months. And I had my song, my first recording on the radio while I was getting in the bath in the bathtub, the baptismal pool. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a difference there. So Rick and I, um, let's see here. After we were baptized, we heard about health uh, lectures by a Jewish health educator with four PhDs at the Times Square Center in New York City. We started attending every week. Now, this was right after we were baptized and did so for several months without missing a lecture. This solidified me in the health message. During one particular lecture, I remember thinking to myself, he is speaking directly to me. This was Dr. J.M. Hoffman. I don't know if any of you remember him. He was amazing. His subject was hypoglycemia, precursor to diabetes. What an eye opener. He gave a list of so-called foods that was in our refrigerator and said plainly and firmly, if you have any of these items in your refrigerator or cabinet, go home and throw them in the garbage and don't take them out if you want to get better. And you'll never have this health issue again. He was right. I obeyed and for over five decades have enjoyed amazing health, energy, and clarity of mind. And by the way, after I threw all that away, I said, what is there to eat? I don't have anything to eat. But gradually, the Lord showed me what, how to replace the bad things with good things. Amen. So that's what I had in my refrigerator that I threw away. Lots in my cabinets, lots and lots of sugar. And listen to this. Sugar makes the blood very thick and sticky. It stresses the liver, pancreas, and adrenals. It destroys the immune system, and it leads to degenerative diseases and a, and a growth pathogenic, pathogenic yeast organisms within the body. One main cause of candida, diabetes, and cancer, and irritability in the disposition. Tooth decay and it's addictive and decreases the body's ability to destroy bacteria and fight infections. That's my Shorter's Health Manual, page 109. I was on my way to becoming a diabetic. My mom and all my aunts died of diabetes except one. All my brothers are diabetic or pre-diabetic, but not me. The health message saved my life. Here are the foods that I threw away. Flesh foods, dairy foods, sugar and ice cream, vinegar, tea, coffee, and cola, white bread, sweet pastries, potato chips, and all kinds of chips, and candy, Kool-Aid, and all sugary drinks. Here are some very important principles for eating that became my everyday habit. I used to eat one meal all day long. I now eat two meals a day called time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting. E.G. White did it. She ate it six in one. I don't drink with my meals. It dilutes the digestive juices and ruins digestion, causes bloating and sour stomachs and flatulence. Number three, I do not mix fruits and vegetables together in the same meal. Fruits digest quickly, but vegetables take much longer. It causes fermentation in the stomach and poisons the breath and the entire system. Number four, I do not eat late after 2 p.m. unless it is an emergency. This drains the life's vital forces. The digestive system must rest when you rest. Otherwise, you wake up with bad dreams, tired and unprepared for breakfast and the day's activities. Next, I do not eat until I am full. This is the worst habit to break. It steals your strength, clarity and concentration of mind. 
It is a medically recognized condition called food coma, a state of drowsiness after a meal. You cannot understand truth or have clear spiritual discernment. Revelation 3.18. And you're bringing sickness upon yourself by clogging the system. Number six, no snacks, no beverages, and just water between meals. This is my favorite habit. Why? Because of the peace and clarity of mind and bodily strength with no regrets for over five decades. No more blackouts. I love it. Amen. And so my lifestyle daily activities were ordered around the eight laws of health. It's simple, free, and proven by my lifestyle and thousands of others. I almost never get sick unless I overwork, intemperance, and need a rest and have been intemperate in my medical missionary work. Here is a way to remember them easily, and it even tells you when to start. Start now. <laughs> Not tomorrow, start now. So these are the basic eight laws of health. S for sunshine, T for temperance, A for always exercise, R for rest, T for trust in our creator, Jesus Christ. N, nutrition. Plant-based diet, Genesis 1, 29 and 3.18. O for oxygen, neg negative ions. W, water, used inside and out. So how do you get sick? Disease never comes without a cause. The way is prepared and disease is invited by the disregard of the laws of health. Ministry of Healing 2.34. Sickness, disease of every kind. Ruined constitutions, premature decay, untimely deaths. These are all a result of the violations of the laws of health. Now, I thought this was too simplistic when I first heard it. However, the more I studied God's inspired writings given to Ellen G. White, believe me, it is true. Disease is a violation of the laws of health. That's right. And so here's the bottom line. Don't ever get any sunlight, overwork, never exercise. Stay up late every night. Don't pray or read your Bible. Eat bad food. It takes 10 to 15 years to make cancer. Stay inside all the time. Work and study and sleep and never get fresh oxygen from the trees. Drink everything but water. <laughs> we, the human family, quote, have brought disease upon ourselves by our ignorance of how to eat, our rebellion in refusing to change. Quote, I never, certainly never thought I would have to learn how to eat to the glory of God, but it's true. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 and Revelation 14, 6 and 7. It is a call to the health message, which includes the dress message in order to give glory to God, to his holy name. Now this is practical religion. A Amen. straight testimony? Absolutely. If it were not straight, it could not do its separating work of distinguishing the wheat from the tares. This is necessary, though it is a terrible ordeal. Quote, the world will be rocked to sleep in the cradle of carnal security. The multitudes are striving to forget God and they accept fables that they may pursue the path of self-indulgence undisturbed. Review and Herald, tw October 26, 1886. Did you know T. Colin Campbell in his book, The China Study, traveled the world over and his conclusion is compelling and the message clear. Animal foods lead to disease. Plant foods reverse your heart attack, prevent and, and treat it. Let me repeat that. Animal foods lead to disease. Plant foods prevent and treat it. Plant-based diets give you more energy, reverse your heart disease, 
decrease your cancer risk, outsmart your genes, and make your life longer and healthier. Where else have we heard this message? Have you ever heard of the blue zones? They are areas in the world where people live healthy lives and live to be over 100 years old. They're called centurions. The Blue Zone demographics done by Gianni Pess and Michael Poulain were, was published in 2004. The Blue Zones are Sardinia, Italy, Okinawa, Japan. They have an 80% rule to stop eating. In other words, never overeat. Nicola Pen Peninsula, Costa Rica, Icaria, Greece, and the only place in the United States is Loma Linda, California. This is remarkable. Do you see the connection with Loma Linda, California? All five blue zones have eight simple lifestyle habits in common. Exercise, plant-based diet, portion control, temperance, and faith-based communities and more. And the Nutrition 2023 research the researchers analyzed medical records of 719,147 veterans, uh, questionnaire data, and concluded, get started on eight healthy habits by the age of 40 and extend your life by 23 to 24 years. The only difference is no smoking and no opioids. The health message can damn it, can dam the health message can change and save your life as well. Quoting, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole body, soul, and spirit be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. And this is my favorite part. Faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. Amen. You must say yes, though. You must welcome the Lord in and follow his directions. He will do it. It is by faith in his righteousness that we are changed into the same image. Faith is just believing, trusting, obeying. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God gave this health message to his end time people to prepare them for his coming. Cleansed of all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. You cannot do it without this health message. It is our strongest asset. Come on, let's get going. Step fast. We're running out of time. Let's Amen. <laughs> so I Amen. have 42 verses here from the Bible. And if you want these, just go to my website or call my 1-800 number, 1-800-823-0481. And you can... Find out how to order these little tracks and you can give them out. And also there's no copyright on them. Share them and share the health message. Now I have just a few more things to share with you. 18 reasons why you should be a medical missionary and a health reformer now. Number one, we have come to a time when every member of the church should be a medical missionary. 1962. Medical missionary work brings to humanity the gospel of the release from suffering. Medical ministry 251. It is better to prevent disease than to know how to treat it when it is contracted. Ministry of Healing 138. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from the conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. Councils on Health, page 190. Eating, drinking, and dressing all have a direct bearing upon our spiritual advancement. Councils on Diets and Foods, 57. God's people are to be genuine medical missionaries ministering to the needs of soul and body. And that's found in Medical Ministry 127. Number seven, combine medical missionary work with the third angel's message and health reform principles and see if the breath of life will not come into these churches. Medical Ministry 320. Every church is to be a training school for medical ministry. Councils on Diets and Foods 4, 470. Soon 
No work will be done in ministerial lines, but medical missionary work. Councils on Health 533. Health reform is one of the greatest branches of the work for the preparation of the coming of the Son of Man. Councils on Diets and Food 7071. Those who live in the last days of this earth's history need to be fully established in the principles of health reform. 3T 140-141. Nothing will open doors for the truth like evangelistic medical missionary work. Temperance, page um, Evangelism 513. Health reform, <laughs> don't let anybody tell you it's not salvific. Health reform is for our salvation and the salvation of the world. Temperance 249. Medical missionary work is the pioneer work, the right hand and the right arm and the right hand, the right arm of the gospel and the three angels' messages. Evangelism 513, 7 t 59, 6 t 229. God is not only calling upon the ministers, but also upon physicians, nurses, canvassers, Bible workers, and other laymen of various talents to be medical missionaries. Medical ministry 248. Cancers, tumors, and all inflammatory diseases are largely caused by meat eating. Thus, we plant disease in our tissues and blood. Then we then when we are exposed to malarious atmospheres, prevailing epidemics, and contagious disease, the system is not in a condition to resist the disease. So what is the servant of the Lord saying here? That's Spalding and McGann's Collections, page 48. That if you stay on a plant-based diet, when these, when you are exposed to malarious atmosphere, fears, prevailing epidemics, contagious diseases, the system is not in a condition to resist the disease. However, if you are on a plant-based diet following the council, you will not get COVID. You will not get these diseases that keep going around and around. Your system is strong. Your immune system will combat it successfully. Number 17, put the, veggie, put the veggie meat down and slowly back away, according to Loma Linda Health research, Researchers. It causes higher mortality rate in vegetarians. Published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, May 25, 2022. Now, I used to eat veggie meat, but I soon realized you can get hooked on that and never get off. And if you read the ingredients closely, you probably won't want to eat it anymore. I'm a good cook. I'm a scratch cook. You know what that means, right? <laughs> Everything from scratch. And the last one, drugs never cure, only change the location of the disease and hurry the person to the grave. Disease and its causes, chapter three. These are all spirit of prophecy Quotes. I put the strongest ones I could find in there. Why? <laughs> because <laughs> we need this health message. It will save our lives. You want to be yes. sick? Go out and eat it. But you're going to be sick. You won't be yes. good for anybody. <laughs> okay. Yes. Let me finish with some benefits. You're going to be amazed at this. Now, this is my personal testimony as well. I'm there. I have 20 something. I'm just going to go over them briefly. And then I know you have questions. <laughs> Dana, Sister Dana, slower aging, less wrinkles, clear mind, sharper memory, more energy, stamina, and vitality during the day, better digestion, assimilation of food and nutrition, excellent weight management, especially when combined with the two meal a day plan, and not a crumb, no juice, just water. Less expensive grocery bills, especially when combined with your personal garden. And what are they putting in the soil? Lots of things we don't want to eat. And superior nutrition, dense and healing, a variety of fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, and some organic non-GMO grains. Ag environmentally friendly and less waste, stronger immune system especially when combined with exercise, less prone to illness, disease, and viruses. You will live stronger, healthier, 
lives, less stress and work on the digestive organs. Okay. You will sleep better at night complete with a complete empty stomach. Uh, you'll be ready for the next day. No joint pain. Clearer perception of right and wrong. It will check self-indulgence and bring victory into your experience. And it takes away cravings. So if you don't eat those craving foods, they can't pull on you. I used to drive miles in the middle of the day just to get a bag of potato chips when I first moved to the country. I said, wait a minute, I am not going to be controlled by a bag of potato chips. I put them down in all kinds of chips and I don't have the cravings anymore. Okay, it aids a sunny and pleasant disposition and you and your energy and attitude is also sunny. Firm and restrict obedience to these health principles makes every other temptation easier to come. And that is said also by the servant of the Lord. The peace of God gives serenity of mind and body because you are taking the best care of your body temple that he must dwell in, guide and change and prepare for heaven. Since your body is the temple of the living God, you are bringing glory to him by taking the best care of your body and answering the call to fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. This is the everlasting gospel that must go to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. The first angel's message is a part of the Sabbath message, the mark of the beast. The health reform I was shown is a part of the three angels' messages. Wow. And just as closely connected with it are the arm and the hand with the human body. One important part of the ministry is to faithfully present to the people the health reform. She's talking to every one of us as Seventh-day Adventists. One important part of the ministry is to present faithfully to the people the health reform as it stands connected with the third angel's message. That's the Sabbath. And as part and parcel of the same, just two more statements. The Lord has given instruction that the gospel is to be carried forward and the gospel includes health reform in all its phases. And I might add the medical missionary work, which is the, how can I say it, venue that we use or the protocol that we use to spread the health message. It is the Lord's design that the restoring influence of health reform shall be a part of the last great effort to proclaim the gospel. I hope you've been inspired to do that which the Lord is asking us to do. We are called out special people, mm -hmm. the last day people. And mm -hmm. God has given us this health message to strengthen us, to encourage us, and to give us all that we need to make it through. Are you ready to start? Are you determined yeah. to do what God says? There's a blessing waiting for you. You cannot imagine. Amen. Start now, right? Start now. Why not? <laughs> you know, you, you said several things there that I would just briefly like to touch on. Mm -hmm. And you talked about the veggie meats. And that's one of the things my husband has a presentation on our channel called Excitotoxins. Yes. And he he did a lot of research on this. And if, if you're not familiar with that, there's a present well, his presentation on mm -hmm. our channel. But there's another one by Dr. Russell Blaylock. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's called The Taste That Kills. Wow. And my husband researched and he found that one can. It was either Vegilinx or Big Franks. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Contained 27 different excitotoxins. Wow, I believe it because yeah. I was hooked on Big Franks. <laughs> oh yeah, and if if you don't know, the excitotoxins cause your your brain neurons to just fire so rapidly that mm -hmm. they die. Now, I don't know about you, but I need all the brain cells I can get. Me too. <laughs> and, yeah. So so that you know, avoiding excitotoxins is is not an option. That's right. So mm -hmm. uh, the other thing you mentioned was uh, one of your points was soon there will be no work done in any lines. 
except the medical missionary work. I think we all need to just stop and take a deep breath and Mm -hmm. let that sink in. That's right. If we had no other reason to become mm-hmm. medical missionaries, that's enough. Right exactly. There. Because well, you're, let, not, you're not going to be able to do anything else. No. And le- there's a follow-up statement on that. And I have it in my health manual, but it says, we have come to a time where every, every person in the church should be a, a medical, medical missionary. missionary. Now, yes. That was written 100 years ago almost. That's right. So, mm-hmm. So that's that's almost no old news, isn't it? You know? Exactly. Yes. So it it should be. You know, I have excuse me opportunity from time to time to go and visit churches and and do health meetings just like you do. And and I'll tell you, it is so rewarding. Is not a strong enough word. It's exciting. Yes. To see the people embrace this. Yes. To begin to do this and. I know that during during the pandemic, mm-hmm. a lot of people uh, became a little bit nervous with sticking with just the natural remedies. Mm-hmm. But through the thick of of the pandemic, mm-hmm. my husband and I never got sick. No, me either. Never. Yeah. And so I, I'm not at all saying that you're invincible, you know, when no, like this happens, not. but it certainly puts you on vantage ground. Now, exactly. um, as far as the health message goes, there's other things that in today's world that we deal with, you mentioned earlier, the toxicity mm-hmm. in the soil and in the environment and everything. And, and for myself, I was bitten by a tick. I had Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Then I had mold toxicity. I had tetanus and all these crazy things, autoimmune disease developed. And so I was dealing with all these things. And I firmly believe that if I hadn't been for decades on a plant-based diet and had a real vibrant strength, I probably would not have survived all that. Exactly. So I'm very grateful that, you know, I was, I was prepared for all this infectious stuff that I dealt Mm. with. Yes, And uh, it was a really good experience. Yes, I'm sure. I learned a lot. Um, Sister Gwen, you also mentioned about how embracing the dietary changes Mm -hmm. strengthens our self-control. Yes. And we know that it was the indulgence of appetite in the Garden of Eden that caused all this mess. Mm-hmm. So doesn't it stand to reason that if if that is where mankind failed in the beginning mm-hmm. and yes. then Christ spent all those weeks in the wilderness fasting for us, mm-hmm. that it's a reasonable service exactly. to embrace this. It's very reasonable. Yep. Yeah. And we have the testimony of the children of Israel going through the desert, how they yeah. raised the flesh pots of Egypt. Many of them were destroyed because they couldn't overcome appetite. They wanted yeah. the flesh pots of Egypt. I so. think we're also told an inspiration that um, it was so that they would be more manageable. Exactly. That they were person. And I find that to be true as well. You're more calm, peaceful. You don't get yes. agitated as well. You can be more pleasant because she makes a very insightful statement that the food that we eat becomes thoughts, good or bad. Now, I'm putting it in my in in my uh, vernacular. Your words. Yes. My words. But that's exactly what she's saying. The food you eat will turn into good words or bad words. Yes. Good you thoughts know. or bad thoughts. <laughs> Yeah, that's, you know, when you think about that, um, if we truly believe that we are in the final moments of earth's history, and I think most thinking people, in fact, I, I just yeah. got a, um, a message not too long before we came on from a gal who lives in Mexico. She's from America, and mm-hmm. she's not of my faith, but mm-hmm. people of all walks of life are recognizing yeah. something is impending something is exactly imminent something is different yes and so many people are getting these lifestyle diseases and stuff and people are just wide open 
Mm. And when people see that, that they can trust us with their physical health, mm -hmm. they're much more likely when you say to, to trust us with their spiritual health. Absolutely. Yes. Well, I thank you so much. This has been a real blessing, but I want to take a few minutes. If anyone else has just a short comment or a question that we can uh, ask Sister Gwen, she has another uh, appointment here in just a little bit. So I want to respect her time. So if there's anybody who has a question, you can either raise your hand or quickly unmute yourself. And okay, Judy, uh, quick question, quick comment. Judy? Okay, she took her hand down. Maybe there was okay. nothing there. Okay. Now her hand's back up. Judy, can you <laughs> unmute yourself? Okay, she must be having technical difficulties, and that's, that's understandable. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else have a question or a comment for, for Sister Gwen? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Mm -hmm. My question is, is meat eating the only thing that causes inflammation? No, absolutely not. Junk food, soda pop, uh, dairy products. The, uh, the servant of the Lord mentions especially flesh meats, the flesh of dead animals. Mm. and dairy products. And so, uh, like I was telling Dana before we got on, when I got baptized, I would keep the Bible here and the health message right next to it. And I would read councils on diets and foods every single day because I'd never heard of a health message. Adventists who have heard of it, I feel, do not appreciate it adequately. Right. right. But uh, the things that are there are very con constricting, if you will, restrictive, but they are for our good. We were talking earlier about baking powder. Most people don't think of anything Adventist too, but in that book, it says we should not eat Solaris, Solaris any kind. And that means baking powder, baking soda, all of them that uh, supposedly that don't have aluminum and don't have this is for our own good. Mm -hmm. Because she says it eats the lining of the stomach. It steals all the nutrition from your food. Mm -hmm. So there are reasons for this. And this, why, this is why I wrote a health manual. Because Ellen White didn't give us all the reasons. So mm -hmm. I wanted to research and see, now what does this do to my body when I eat it? Mm -hmm. Although I did not have to have the reason to obey. I obeyed immediately. But mm -hmm. I wanted to help others. And so I, I wrote the book, Shorter's Health Manual. To give people reasons why. Same thing with vinegar. Vinegar, a lot of people eat vinegar. They don't even think about it. But vinegar has little eels in it. Little worms. So, you know, go on, eat your vinegar. But you're eating worms. You can replace it with lemon juice. Um, you're talking about apple cider vinegar? <laughs> yes, ma'am. The world, we can't follow what the world says. We have to go with what the Lord says through Ellen White. It's either one or the other. Because serving the Lord said, God does nothing in partnership with Satan. So the world also tells us that we can eat, uh, you can get well from cancer by eating shark cartilage, something like, no. Mm -mm. There's a lot of things you can take. And so uh, I think we have to be very, very careful. Okay. And pop that book, Consoles on Diets and Foods, and read it. You'll be proud. What is your website again? Homeward Publishing Ministries. Dot com. What's the first word? Yes, I have tons of books on health there. And lots so, and lots of books. You know, what's that? Lots and lots of books and medical missionary information. Yes. And <laughs> kits and all kind of stuff. Training. And my sister, you would be so blessed. You you would okay. have answers I, that have never been answered before. I didn't get the first word. Kohler? I'll put it in the chat, okay? Okay, thank you. Oh, word. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I finally was able to unmute. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I had this trouble once before in a health program. I don't know why. But <laughs> anyway, um, my I really feel that we really need to encourage people to share more Bible promises. 
Yes. I am 33 years almost prescription drug free. And that's a miracle because the opposition I had within the church was unbelievable. Mm. Mm. Um, oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. I have a heart for demon possessed people. Oh. I have a heart for people in psychiatric wards. Oh. I have a heart for people who come into the church and people know what their label is. And oh. some of them have been wrongly diagnosed. And oh. today we are dealing with many who are probably demon possessed. Oh. Many little children in schools are in yoga. Oh. Many little children don't even get out in nature. Mm. In fact, many of their parents are not fit to go out there. They'd probably be stiff the next yeah. day. They are not in physical shape, you know, to, to go out there. And mm. so many little children have only ever seen the grocery store wow. or maybe the playground. Mm. And a lot of little children in my community, it's a small community, at least at recess and noon, they're outside. When they get home, you don't see them. You don't mm. see them on the snow banks. This mm. is a rural, more of a rural area. And mm. if we do not understand demon possession, we are not going to be good medical missionaries. Mm. And we need to stop and we need to learn more about this or we are not going to be able to help the people. And many of the people out there are polydrugged. If you mm. take a stress leave, uh, due to maybe, you know, drinking or whatever was the reason for a person taking a stress leave, and you go to a doctor, you will now get a label, you will get medication, and somebody called it career suicide, mm. you know, so we are living in a much different age. Mm -hmm. Children today are getting a lot of therapy in the school, but it's the wrong kind of therapy. Mm -hmm. It's all on feelings. And so, you know, asking them questions, are you thinking suicidal thoughts? Uh, mm -hmm. Are you, you know, what about this is very young children. Mm -hmm. So we need to really get up to speed. We tend to help people with heart disease and those kind of issues. But when it comes to mental illness, we are lacking. I found more help outside of the church than I did in the church. Mm -hmm. And I am very thankful for what Mrs. White has to say about drugs, mm -hmm. because that was what helped me. Right. And uh, what also helped me was men outside of the church, like Peter R. Bragan, who wrote Toxic Psychiatry. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Dr. Joseph on YouTube right now, powerful. We need to listen to these people. God is bringing people out of Babylon, and we're not even recognizing it. You know, like helping people to taper off psychiatric drugs successfully. But they need our message. They need our health message. Mm -hmm. But how can we, how can the angels bring us together with these people? You know, that maybe they're not mentioning Jesus, but they're mm -hmm. having success in coming off of their drugs. And one doctor we need to be aware of, you maybe are, Dr. Josiah Rambali. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of him? No, I'm not. I'm sorry. No. Adventist. He is a Seventh-day Adventist. And mm -hmm. I know a little boy who was demon-possessed at age four in mm -hmm. Sylvan Lake, Alberta, Canada. And mm -hmm. fortunately, his book, Beyond Medicine, was introduced to the mother. And she learned, and he happened to be in the area. And at age five, was was um, uh, the demons were cast out. He's 15 now and is totally healthy. So that's why. And the book he wrote, revised, was 2020, Beyond Medicine. And on Chris Lang, Chris Lang does the program with um, uh, he, uh, Roger Minot. You Everybody knows about Roger Minot. Okay, he did the documentary. Fortunately, three weeks ago, I was able to see that he has done a program with um, Dr. Josiah Rambali. So please go to Chris Lang. Go to Chris Lang on YouTube, and you will see some powerful information on demon possession. Let me share this with you, Judy. Um, I wasn't prepared for this, but I'm going to try to cover this as much as I can so as not to reveal who the person was, what the situation was. But recently I was encountered with 
a woman who came into the place where I was and she was demon possessed. Not only was she demon possessed, but she, the demons in her began to attack me. The first thing I said, they would say, oh, this woman is, she's kind of, you know, and they would kind of avoid her. But we got into a conversation because she was at the breakfast table. But what happened was the demons in her began to, the only way I know how to describe it is affront me. She yeah. started attacking me, but I knew this poor woman who's so sweet, the demons were talking to me through her. And I said that to her and I rebuked them in the name of Jesus. Then I called for some help because there were some other people across the room. And I said, could you please come and help me? I should never enter into this alone. This was not even a month ago. I said, we have a situation where we are being attacked by demons. I am being personally attacked. So I, the servant of the Lord says, never enter into this alone. So we call for reinforcement and each one of us prayed. By the time we prayed, before we were even halfway through praying, she broke down weeping and saying, mm -hmm. this is the same thing. This is what I wanted. This is, this is what, this, this is the same thing that happened to me before. But what she was saying, the demons came back into her. And before we finished, not this woman stayed with us probably a week later. And everyone, I mean, everyone said this was their testimony. She is a changed woman. Amen. She is a Amen. changed woman. The demons Amen. are gone. And all I can say is you don't want to enter into this if you're an if you don't know Jesus, because yeah. like the Bible says, the demons will say, I know Peter and I know Paul, but you, I don't know. And they will attack you. So mm -hmm. you must be converted and you must have the faith to believe that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And you go into it with perfect confidence that God is on your side and he will, and you quote the Bible, he will do what his word says. He's not a liar. That's Amen. all I have to say on that. But thank you for your testimony and thanks for sharing. Amen. There, I appreciate there is that one too. more book. There is one more book and it's called Victory on the Battlefield, Setting the Captives Free. It was by a man who was demon possessed and uh, he has died now. But this book is powerful and it's got Mrs. White's quotes in it. And if we don't understand it, we won't be able to help them. Amen. And if we're afraid of it, we won't be able to help. And many pastors... Everybody calls everything mental illness and medicates, and that's the sad part. Yes. Okay, I wanted to address something just quickly, and then we've got to let Sister Gwen know she's got another appointment. Um, mm -hmm. Bonnie asked the question, is only meat-eating what causes inflammation? Mm -hmm. There's actually a statement in the Spirit of Prophecy where she says that inflammation, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, is the foundation of all disease. Mm-hmm. That's a powerful statement if you think mm -hmm. about it. And if you fast forward that and put it into today's research, that's mm -hmm. exactly what researchers are saying. Right. And one of the biggest things that researchers are showing right now that's mm -hmm. causing inflammation is fats, oils, like cooking oils that people are right. using. Right. And, and so look at that too. What are you cooking with? Mm -hmm. Are you, are you using these, are you using a rancid oil? Are you mm -hmm. using an oil that can't stand high heat? Are you using vegetable oils? These are all, they produce lipopolysaccharides, which are extremely inflammatory. So, so the other, the other thing with that is that the, the other thing with that, with the fat is that all the top three diseases, all you can really go down, almost all of them are caused by these fats, heart disease, cancer, diabetes. It's the main thing that's killing us. And that is why in First Samuel, it says that we should not eat meat with the blood and the fat. And that's in consoles on diets and foods as well. And I says, well, nobody ever talks about that. Right. Because that's the difference between kosher and not kosher. Kosher meat supposedly doesn't have the fat of the animal neither the blood, but who takes the fat and the blood out of meat? And it right. says 
there in first Samuel, it's a sin to eat it with. Why? Because you shorten your life. Right. Right. And it, 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 you know, as, as someone who grew up eating meat, if you don't have the blood and the fat in it, it kind of tastes like cardboard. Yeah. You know? So that's why everybody wants that. Okay. Yeah. We're going to, I have one question here and then we're going to have to let sister Gwen go. Hello, everyone. Oh, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. <laughs> I know, but you told me you had another appointment. Oh, no. Let's, yeah, take, a, let's take okay. some more questions. <laughs> okay. More questions. Can we see this on YouTube? I got mixed up on the time. Absolutely. Um, I will. Put uh, Davina, would you grab a link from my YouTube channel and stick it in the sure. chat for me? <laughs> sure. um, and then, uh, if there's any other questions, uh, we can. She says she can stay for just a little bit. So, any other questions? Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on right now, and if as far as training, there's a lot of things available. Sister Gwen has stuff on her web page. We have YouTube uh, videos on medical missionary stuff. Med Missionary has a whole program. I mean, if you've never heard of Med Missionary, <laughs> you need to know about Med Missionary. Davina mm -hmm. can share information about that as well. But um, I really feel like with everything that's available as far as training right now, there's really no excuse not to learn something about this. In addition to that, the fact that we have these precious books, Councils on Diet and Foods, Councils on Health, Medical Ministry, all of these books that have all this information in it that, that will address anything that you're going to face. That's right. So, yes. Okay. So Med Missionary has online training coming up in May. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lady that I'm working with right now. She's in, um, and in fact... Loli, are you still here? By the yes. way, can I say something when you finish about our event coming up? Yes. Okay. Just quick. Um, Loli, I'm also working with a lady in um, Oklahoma who was bitten by a brown recluse on her face. Hmm. And she didn't contact me until almost four days later. So she has some damage. Hmm. But Loli can attest to the fact that, you know, even we don't need to be afraid of the devil's big guns. Mm. You know, I had Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, which has 30% mortality rate, mm. still dealing with mold toxicity. Mm. Um, I had tetanus, all these things. We don't need to be afraid. Autoimmune disease. We mm. can deal with these things with God's remedies. Mm. So, Sister okay. Graham, what, what, what did you oh, want? Oh, yes. Uh, May the 3rd, we okay. have uh, through the 5th, we have a mini camp meeting, including a health expo at the camp meeting. We have Dr. Mark Sandoval, Dr. Conrad Vine. We have Eva Tompkins. Uh, she's a financial markets expert and um, expert in CBDC, which is uh, central bank digital currency. And she's talking about the digital currency in relationship re to revelation three, I'm sorry, revelation 13. And so uh, we have, let's see, who else? Dr. Patrice Wright. She's the academic dean and interim president of Wachita Hills. She's speaking on God's amazing natural remedies. And let's see, who else do we have? We have Brother Cobb from Meat Ministry, who's doing end-time gardening. Um, let's see, Don Tramiel is doing... Uh, uh, foraging for wild plant, foraging for wild plants, you know, at some point we might be eating grass or plants, you know, just for food because everybody knows a famine is coming mm -hmm. and they have already told us to prepare. So when you run out of food, God will supply, but he will also show you things that are, that just sprout up in the earth that we can eat. So anyway, um, we have hydrotherapy, a medical um, ministry, medical missionary, emergency bag, lots of great things. Uh, how to make your own detergent, foam soap, save money because the money is changing. And you're, yes. you're going to have a lot of money. You're going to look up. You won't have anything. And whatever you have in your house or in your garden is all you're going to have to work with. So we need to be medical missionaries now. 
Yes. Are we uh, will sister, not make it later. Mm-hmm. Sister Gwen, where is this camp meeting? Oh, it's going to be at Hayden Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church. And that's in Hayden, Idaho, uh, May 3rd to the 5th. It's just Friday afternoon. It starts through Sunday. The Health Expo is Sunday 10 to 5. We have over 25 exhibitors, um, everything from salves to books to all kinds of exams. It's it's really the Adventists in this area are generally more present truth. And they're coming out of the woodwork wanting to support this event. So that's good. Praise the Lord. Yes. I'm glad. Now, are you going to, are you going to record any of these meetings? Yes, I'm glad you asked. Um, perhaps everything will not be recorded. For instance, at the exhibits, all the, they're blocking off the whole parking lot in the back of the church for the exhibitors. And we'll have breakout sessions with, Oh, we have three sessions, four times, uh, in a day. And we also have them in the sanctuary and two other sections. Everything from from canning and pressure canning, we're trying mm-hmm. to teach you everything you need to prepare for the coming crisis. Okay. Now, where can we find these videos later? On my website, homewardpublishingministries.com. If you stay on the home page or go on the announcement page, either one, you will see the three uh, flyers that announce everything we're doing for the whole weekend. They're okay. right there on the ho- on the home page, homewardpublishingministries.com. Perfect. Okay. Can you give the 800 number one more time, Sister Gwen? Uh, by the way, we also have a YouTube channel, but you can go to my website and just click on YouTube and it will take you straight straight to the YouTube channel. Everything that's recorded at the uh, mini camp meeting and health expo will be on our YouTube channel. And so what was that you asked, sister? Uh, uh, if you could just repeat the 800 number again. Yes. 1-800. I'm sorry. You don't need one. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. This world keeps changing so much. You have to keep up with it, right? Yes. 823-0481. Okay. 823-0481. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, I think we're going to call it a wrap here. And. Uh...